All right, welcome back to <laughs> Office Hours with Structure Free <laughs> Learning. And so in this problem, we've got like, a, um, this is gonna be a statically indeterminate torsion problem. All right, and in this problem, we have given a, let's see, we have a magnesium, which we're gonna need the, we'll just call it GMG. Uh, we'll need that, we might need that number. Hopefully, maybe it'll cancel out, who knows. And then we have a steel, steel, I'll have G for steel. I'll need that number. Uh, let's see, I have an allowable shear stress. The allowable shear stress for magnesium is 45 megapascals. And the allowable shear stress for steel is 75 megapascal. I wanna find max torque that I can apply. Damn, what the heck does this look like? And the ang and, and then the angle of twist associated with that. And angle of twist. Okay, <laughs> MP. <laughs> All right, and let's see, what does this look like? I have a rod and on the inside of it, there's a different material and that material, so I have two materials, it's fixed. So steel is in blue, steel, and then the magnesium is the outer. And uh, if and I have a, a torque, where's the torque? Oh, it's applied here and it's going, the external torque is like this. Okay, I don't wanna use, I'm not gonna use a symbol, I'm gonna use T naught again, okay? So it's just some concentrated internal torque applied through the center. And so if I do internal loading, so maybe one of my instincts is to look at internal loading, you know, I'll notice that I only have like two, dis I only have two discontinuities. I have here and here. I have two discontinuities, I make one cut. When I look at that that drawing right here, I would have this T naught and then this internal torque. Are there even letters? There's letters here. We'll call this end A, this end B. And we would say this is T A B. And what we get is that, oh, that's interesting. I get T A B equals T naught. Yeah? Which is like, what? Okay. Right? But what, what it also means is that, oh, well, the reason this is statically indeterminate is that I have two different materials. And so this internal torque here, this T naught is the sum of T in the magnesium plus T in the steel. Yeah, okay, I have two materials. So my, I have two unknowns. This is my, my equilibrium equation, like this. Yeah, I, hopefully I'm doing this right. Oh, snap, I don't know, I could be wrong. I might have to look at the solution manual too. <laughs> You know you do it. <laughs> not, you, not you here. I'm talking about the people out there. <laughs> yeah, <fair. laughs> not us. Not us. We would never do that. No, I'm kidding. There's anyway. Anyway, you're the best. Okay. <laughs> Wait, there's a solution manual out there. Of course. There's a solution manual for everything. I didn't even Man. know that. <laughs> no, seriously. Sometimes I think like uh, the other professor and I wrote a book, right? And uh, um, I think the solution manual was out before we even published it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the PDFs are out before we even start selling it. <laughs> All right, so so we have it's statically indeterminate. So in a sense, I have two unknowns and one equation. All right, one equation right here, and and so I need a compatibility equation. Equation right here. The idea is when I look at this cross section. So if I were to look at a cross section here, right here, and then here is this what's happening right here. Uh, the angle of twist in the steel, the angle of twist, like here's the initial, and then this would be the final, right? And this angle, depending on whether you're looking at the steel or the magnesium, the angle of twists are the same. So the phi in the steel equals phi of the magnesium. I have T steel times the length of the steel over G steel times J steel is equal to T MG L M G over G M G J M G. The lengths are the same. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. The lengths right here, they're the lengths are the same because this is just L. So they cancel. Uh, the G's are different and I guess by definition the J's would be different. Do are we given diameters? No. Of this thing? No way. Oh, wait, yes. We are. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay, so the outside diameter of this thing is 80 millimeters, and the inside, the steel portion is 40, the diameter. All right, so here, I'm feeling like that we're still on the right page. T steel over G steel, and J is a solid circular shaft, so for steel, pi over 2 
times 20 millimeters to the fourth is equal to T of the magnesium over G of the magnesium, pi over two, uh oh, 40 millimeters to the fourth power. Oh, 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 they gotta be careful here. This is where you can make mistakes. Pi over two times 40 millimeters to the power of four minus 20 millimeters to the power of four, like this. And the pi over twos cancel, yes? And this tells me that the steel is equal to G steel over GMG times 20 millimeters to the Q4 over 40 millimeters. Those units will all cancel, so I could have just kind of omitted those units, but it's all good. 20 millimeters to the fourth times TM and G. So now I have T steel is some number times TMG. Of uh, shear modulus for steel, 75 gigapascals, and for magnesium, 18 gigapascals. So we let's plug in, chug some numbers here that we get that T steel is 75 over 18 times 20 to the fourth over 40 to the fourth minus 20 to the fourth. TMG. 0 0.278 TMG is T steel. Someone double check that? Yeah? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Good. We got double check. So hopefully that worked. All right. So that is a relationship here. And then we take that and plug it into our equilibrium equation, which would tell us here, let's see, if I plug and chug. So now if I do some solving. So in the, uh, if I combine the equations, so here, if I combine those two, I would get that T naught is equal to TMG plus 0.278 TMG. And this tells me T naught, the external torque is equal to 1.278 TMG, which would tell me TMG is equal to, can you do one over 1.278 for me? Yeah. 0.782 times T naught. And then I can plug it back into my equilibrium equation or whatever else, and I would get that T steel is hopefully I will get 0.218 T naught. And these would be my two internal torques as a function of the externally applied torque. Now, the question is, now we have to go back to the question is, what is the maximum torque T naught that I can apply? So shoot, it's a maximum load problem. And so now I have to look at the design relationship. So five, I'm looking at the BDR. This is a fun, this is a, this is like all in one kind of problem, man. Statically indeterminate, angle of twist, design. What a great problem. Although it would take a long time maybe in an exam situation, but I have two different BDRs because I have two different materials and two different allowable stresses. So let's take, let's take the steel first. I would have tau applied less than or equal to tau allow of the steel, yeah? And, and here, the applied stress would be T steel. Where would the maximum shear stress in the steel occur? Because we're looking at the steel, and so we're looking on the outer surface of the steel. And so this, if this is the center line, this distance was, uh, was at 40, so this radius is 20 millimeters. That's where we're interested in the stress. So it'll be T steel, the torque in the steel times the radius 20 millimeters divided by, divided by the um, polar moment of inertia of the steel, which would pi over two times 20 millimeters to the fourth. This should be less than or equal to the allowable sh shear stress in the steel, which was 75 gigapascal megapascals. So that's 75 megapascals, which is the same as a Newton per millimeter squared. And now I, I just need to solve for that torque. All right. So we got, we got, we did our calculations. We got 381,971.86 Newton millimeters. That would be the torque in the steel that causes failure, which is equal to, this is 0.218 T naught. That would make T naught we got 1,752.2 kilonewton millimeters. And then if I wanna convert this into meters, it'd be one meter over 1,000 millimeters, which would give me, so that would be the torque that causes the steel to fail. 
And now I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process for magnesium. So for magnesium, okay, so what when does the magnesium fail? And again, I have the tau applied, less than or equal to tau allow, and this would be T magnesium. The outer radius of the magnesium where the maximum shear stress occurs is way over here. Its diameter was 80 millimeters. So the outer radius would be 40 millimeters. And so this would be T times 40 millimeters over pi over two, the polar moment of inertia of the magnesium itself, which would be the outer radius 40 millimeters to the fourth minus 20 millimeters to the fourth is less than or equal to the allowable shear stress of the magnesium, which was 45 megapascals. And that is 45 newtons per millimeter squared. And now we, we're gonna solve. We're gonna solve for this. Hopefully this is right. TMG is less than or equal to number 424 one one five zero point one newton millimeters and let's see if i convert this to kilonewton meters this would be tmg is less than or equal to 4.24 kilonewton meters then the magnesium is 0.782 t naught less than or equal to 4.24 kilonewton meters and this would tell me that t naught the external torque that causes the magnesium to fail is 5.42 kilonewton meters. So the question is, now that I have these two torques, which one is going to control the maximum torque I can apply to the shaft without any of the material failing? The lower value so the most I can apply is 1.752 kilonewton meters. So this controls the maximum torque, controls. So T0 max equals 1.752 kilonewton meters. So steel is really weaker than magnesium? Well, it's not that it's weaker than magnesium. Mm -hmm. It's that based on the geometry and the way we have it set up, oh, okay. it is. Okay. It, it's, it's the one that will control, mm -hmm. right? And based on the material properties and things. All right. And because, and also there's, you know, there's other things embedded in this allowable stress too. Okay. There's like a safety factor and all that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In this yeah. case, it's steel is what's going to be, it's a weak link, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now I want to find the angle of twist mm -hmm. of the whole thing. Oh my gosh. But the angle of twist, in a way, we've already found it. Because we know that the angle of twist of the steel is equal to the angle of twist of magnesium, right here. So really, we just plug and chug into one of these, mm -hmm. and we'll get the angle of twist, oh, cool. right? And so, so let's, let's say for steel, mm -hmm. phi steel, it's going to be T steel, L of the steel, whatever the length is, over G steel, J steel. Mm -hmm. And this would be, let's see, T steel, well, with this torque, oh my gosh, the torque, with that torque, the torque in the steel is going to be 0.218 T0, right? 0.218 T0, which in a way we already calculated, mm -hmm. times the length of the, of the rod, 900. So this is 900 millimeters. I would have times 900 millimeters divided by uh, 75 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Shear modulus, 75 kilonewtons, and then I would have pi over two times 20 millimeters to the fourth. And we know that T naught is 1.752, mm -hmm. which means that that's kilonewton meter, so times 1,000 millimeters per meter. I wanna make that unit conversion. 